Hello everybody and welcome back. As you can tell we are in the cockpit again today and we are going to be working on the electronics. So I'm going to go pick up everything that I would like to install today and we will actually get started. So hope you guys are excited because I would like to get some buttons working. Here it goes. Okay, quick overview of everything I grabbed that I would like to get installed and hopefully working in this episode. So, starting from your right, we've got the Cat6 cable, the tester, all the crimping stuff to make cables because we've got to go from the components over to here and actually get them wired in. Um, I have the second layer for this guy sitting over there. We just have to assemble it, so I've got the drill, I've got some bits, I've got some screws and all the components over there, they're already pre-cut out out of MDF. That will get this a little more open, a little more square, that'll keep the frame a little bit better. That will be nice to have. I might also do an outside one just so that this stays free for a little bit longer, we'll see. In addition to that, that's actually an AC to DC power supply, so that provides 12, 24, 5, and 3 volts as well as a common ground. So that's going to go on here as basically the power supply for the cockpit because running it off of an Arduino, just not going to happen. That would be a nightmare. So, moving over here, we have, in addition to that power supply, an actual ESD strap because we are going to be getting into electronics and I would much rather not fry any of them because, well, they're not that cheap, especially if I need a bunch of them. So we are going to take that power supply, we're going to ground it to this rail, that way I can actually have a decent common ground, that way this whole cockpit's kind of grounded and I can just clip on and we'll be good. But I do have to make sure not to hit the paint on these things, I've got to make sure I'm making a good contact with the outside so I might have to actually sand the inside just to get some metal exposed. Things to think about. Moving into the electronics. This guy is a relay. I know I just talked about safety and then just picked up a component, but I don't really have much good to ground on right now. So, that's always a tricky bit. But yeah, so this is a relay. We're going to use the Arduino to turn this on and off, and all it is is a control voltage of open relay, close relay. And that's going to forward power from our power supply into the cockpit, and we're going to be able to turn on and off sections of the cockpit from a control input spot, that will give us a whole lot more inputs and outputs and essentially allow us to matrix inputs and outputs to the same inputs and outputs. We just have to make sure that things don't hang high when we turn them off. But that's a future consideration for now. This is the relay board that we're going to use. Moving over, this guy is a Leo Bodnar, which is not the cheapest things, but they're super easy, super quick to plug in. We might start here today just because it's literally plug and play. So, yeah, these guys, this one's a Leo Bardner BBI-64, and it is 64 individual inputs and outputs, and I think 16 potentiometers if you need to use them, and I don't know if this supports rotary encoders, but I'm going to do most of that on the Arduino anyway, so that I've got a little bit more customizability, if that's even a word. So, yeah, here is the Leo Bardner, and this little guy is actually a shield on an Arduino. So this is an Arduino Leonardo. It supports a keyboard library, so if we want to just direct output straight into the game, we can do that with this, or we can send serial to the computer and we can interpret it on the computer side, which will offer a little bit more customizability, a little more configuration, stuff like that. So I haven't decided which way we're going to go yet, because this would require just a flash. Doing it on the computer means I have to write a second third-party application, which is not the hardest thing in the world, but it's just another step. And on top of that, this is an Arduino shield, so if I wanted to, I can wire components on, I can just hot plug and play, I can literally just stuff a wire in and screw it down, and this makes it super easy for prototyping. So I can just pull outputs, prototype it, if I don't like it, you just unscrew it, move it somewhere else. Works phenomenally, it also means that I can just break out from this tiny little board much easier. And if I really need to, I can solder components on here, so if I've got common resistors, stuff like that, those can all go on here as well. And then finally, over here to the right, these are actually buses. There are several components to them, but essentially these are bus bars, where it's just one gigantic piece of metal, and they're color-coded. And then this bus has a 
connection between the two horizontal pieces. So if I put this bar on there, all the way across, then that means that every one of these is going to have the same output. So that means I can wire something like a common ground, and then have every output on this to go to a common ground. So I can have 10 of these, 15 of these, just plugged into this one bus, and they all have the same common ground. Or if I need five volts, I can do a relay into one of these, and then I can just break that out into, what is it, 12, input, 12 outputs, or 11 outputs and one input, and this voltage can just get split out into all the components, and we can do it that way. So this is essentially just a way to convey power from the actual power supply out into the rest of the cockpits, power or ground. So that is a high level of what we would like to accomplish today. We're gonna to see how much of this we can get through. But the first thing to start out with is actually going to be the power supply. I gotta figure out where to mount it, how to mount it, and we are going to start there. So let's dive right in. Okay, so to get started, I've got this power supply. It's just a cheap one off of Amazon. It is both 110 and 220. I'm going to be plugging it into a 110, so the switch is in the 110 position. This is the bus bar that everything comes off of. How do you power it? Oh, great! I have to make my own power adapter that goes into the wall for this thing, so that's going to be annoying, but... Yeah, so there's a low, neutral, and ground, so I've got to actually make a plug for this. It's kind of annoying, but I've got plenty of extra cable sitting around, so I will do that. But then coming off of that, I've got three commons, three voltages, and an adjustable voltage. I'm going to have to either measure or look at the specs on that, so that seems like a pretty good place to start. I need to find some screws to actually mount this thing and make it simple. I think I'm actually just going to mount it like that, or even better, vertical. Yeah, that's not better. I think we're going to do it horizontal. It means I've got less real estate on the first shelf, but that's just fine. I don't really need the additional real estate. And as far as mounting goes, I do have a hole back here, and I've got a hole over there, so I can literally just screw that in. So yeah, that's pretty easy. I'm actually going to grab a hole punch because I forgot to grab one of those. We're going to punch that. I'm going to move all these components, and we're going to get to work. All right, so for this, we're going to do things a little out of order, but I'm going to make this a ground bus, which basically just means loosening all these, shoving this guy in. That's a good start. And then i got to find a connector that fits it. So we're going to start there. And I did remove the top. This is basically just a plastic shield that tells you amp ratings, and it makes it so you don't touch this, which is kind of important. So you guys probably can't see this too well, I'm going to see if I can get it, but if you look on your left, those are tightened, and there's no real way to get anything in there, but on the right, I've loosened those, and there's a little gap between the top and the bottom. That gap is the one that we're going for, that's the place that we stuff the bus bar in. Now for the bus bar, basically wiggle this in every one of these and get it between all the slots, line up all the fingers. All right, that is now in there. You can see it pinched in there. And I'm just gonna tighten these down. Nice and easy, and then we've got a bus for ground. All right, now that that side is tightened down, anything that I plug in on this side will get transmitted to literally everything else. So, we gotta find a connector that fits these, that way I can essentially just hot plug and play them instead of shove, shove wire and clamp down. I can do that, but this just makes it a little easier for rewiring and stuff like that if I need it. Ooh, that fits. I hook it in. All right, that's one side in the hook. That is a full hook. Not 
bad, not bad at all. It's kind of at an angle, but that is a full hook. So this would essentially allow me to hop on and off ground, say for different levels and stuff like that. So I could daisy chain them. This just makes it a little easier. So I think we're gonna use these hooks on at least some of them. Maybe not all, but at least some. I don't need one quite yet. Although I think I'm gonna be swapping grounds in and out for now. So we'll see. Now this is a full circle and it looks like it would potentially fit. I would have to crush it, but that would be an option. These are low power, so not overly bad. And I can also use these guys on this because, well, in principle, just a little bit bigger. So on the end of my clip, I can actually throw on some of, probably something like this, just a little bit bigger, more sturdy, a little more meat to it, like these yellow ones. Not that big of a head, but it's got a large diameter in there, so probably a blue. Just based on the size of the wire, you stick that in there, and you can crush it with a pair of pliers, and that makes metal on metal contact, and then you heat shrink it, and it really sucks it in there. And then you just plop it on. And you find a size that fits what you're doing. There's these little forks, they also fit. Well, yep, they also fit where you can literally just slide it in, slide it out. I'll probably use these to go out to the buses, but for the relatively permanent power, I'm probably gonna use something like this. That way it literally just pops on, pops in, bobs your ankle. So that way, this is a pretty much permanent connector. So I'll probably use something like this with the full circle and make a cable. But that is a lot of the futzing around. And since I do need additional parts to actually get this guy up and running, we're gonna hold off on that for now. And I might start out with the electronics. All right, so the MDF electronics, or yeah, MDF electronics panel should be pretty easy to do. So we're gonna hop in and build this thing real quick. So here goes. Grab out my bits. Normally you want to pre-drill most stuff, but I, we're not going to, purely because of the fact that because of the fact that these are pretty short screws and you really don't need them because they don't do much. So you really don't need to because it doesn't do much. But you can anyways if it makes you feel more comfortable. So onwards. Basically just visually lining it up left and right, pulling it as tight as we can get. Hoping it stays on. Now placement here is key. Alright, so I've essentially lined it up center-wise, and I put it on the inside of this, that way it sucks it in and in. That will hold it straight. Yeah, that's kind of the most complicated part of this. And I guess the hardest part is make sure you do not over-tighten them because MDF pulls out pretty easily, so you really don't want to do that. Alright, that is in. We're gonna throw it in. So this is where the tricky dance begins. We have to get in both sides without letting it go. Not the hardest thing in the world, but requires a little more grace and elegance. So we are gonna start with the harder one. All the way back here. So there's a little bit more flexibility. This is really where I can flail around a little bit. Whereas once it's up, not so much flailing allowed. And just really finger tight, not even. Basically, just enough to get it in. That sounds like a nut. Oh, nuts. Sorry, it just sounded appropriate. All right, so that's three points that'll hold itself. Let's get the last one in. That's all of them. Well, one in every corner. Let's get a second in every corner, and then we shall begin tightening things down. All right, that's all eight in, and I did color code it, blue on the left, white on the right. Don't know why, it worked. I went with it, we're gonna run with it. But now I've got two shelves, I'm gonna tighten in all these screws. Tighten in all the screws, and yeah, that's what's next. So, here it goes.
Okay, now that step one-ish is complete, let's get some wires coming out to it. So I need to make a wire about, eh, yay long. I'm probably gonna plug it in 24, just keep them coming nice and neat, nice and easy. I'll probably put some kind of cable management here just to keep things nice and neat instead of turning into a rat's nest. So, let's get started on that. Onto the cable. I've got the length that I need. We are going to put on some connectors on the end. Pretty simple. Basically just follow this little diagram here for colors. So I flipped over green, they split that by blue. And that's the A pattern. You can go with the B pattern, but I always go to A first because A. It's just the way I like to do it. And everybody always complains about these little things. They're great for if you need to rip off some more cable. You just kind of pull and it can slice through it. But I don't need any more. And I don't always have an extra pair of dikes on hand, so well, I don't always cut it. But if I have them, I cut it. And we untwizzler the wires. Now comes the hard part, getting this little mesh of wires into one nice little neat, hopefully, form factor. So, I'm gonna take these orange ones and give them a bit of a pull, a bit of a squiggle that should line them up. We're essentially just pulling them straight through bending. Let me grab the green twisted pair. We're gonna kind of wiggle that one into shape. That way all three of these are mostly aligned. Blue. This is the only one that's really weird because we pull the green twisted pair and then do the blue twisted pair, or the blue solid, then the blue twisted pair, and then we come back with the solid green. I don't know who designed this convention, but they did, and it's dumb, and we've been using it since they made it. There's not a new convention that just has all the twisted pairs in a nice line. But we live with it. We've got the brown twisted pair. And ideally you want these as straight and even as possible. We are gonna cut them before we stick them in. But the straighter and more parallel these are, the better. All right, you can see down here, it's nice and straight up here, not so straight. So we are literally just gonna chop that off. That does two things for us. One that gives us a nice, even contact all the way through, which tends to keep your wires in a little bit better state. Two, just makes it easier to push through. Then you're just gonna push all the way through. We're gonna verify, we got orange twisted pair, orange, green twisted pair, blue, blue twisted, green, brown twisted, and brown. Double check it against the diagram, we are correct. Let's solidify this. We're gonna stick this in the RJ45. Crip it, and now we just have to clean up all these guys. Now a good pair of flush cut dikes will help you significantly in this. It's that little tip at the very end because we've got to not cut off the jet out there, but we wanna cut all these wires. These are actually 3D printer ones and they work phenomenally. They come with a 3D printer for cutting filament. They're way better quality than you need, but they are really good as far as a 3D printer goes. Now, one thing that you wanna be cautious of is you wanna make sure that none of these guys are touching each other. That is a pretty important, crucial detail. If they are, you're gonna to have to futz with it, get them separated. But that is one half. We'll get the second half going and then we'll plug it into the tester. All right, so one thing I forgot to grab, which is probably a good idea to use, are, is basically this little bucket of color-coded shields? Covers? Something. But basically these just slot over the cable and it just slots over the cable so that you can have Essentially protects this little clip and they're color coded, which means I can know which color over there corresponds over here, but I only have so many colors of the rainbow, so it will narrow down the choices significantly. So for this first one, we are just going to squeeze it through here. Should have put it on the other end before I put it on, but 
they're not terrible to slide all the way through. That's the first one, and I'm actually going to wait to completely slide it over the end. But you can kind of see how it fits. Just the little nub, the nub, squares, all good. And once we actually plug it in, you just kind of slide this over. And then if you're actually unplugging it, you can either pop this out or you just push down on this little nub. Makes easy, but once we test it, then I'll put it on because it's just kind of a pain. But I'm going to make that second one real quick. So, on to the time lapse. All right, that is the second half made. Let's plug it in and see how she tests. Perfect. So as you notice, it's sending power on one, receiving on the other, and it's doing it for all of them. So that is phenomenal. It means this is a good cable. We can use it. Let's plug it in. Cool. Now I gotta wire the back, put it into the board, get a little breakout of pins. We'll be good. Then we should have a button actually working. And I really wanna cable manage this a little better, but we'll get to that. So, next thing, break out one of these. So, I am ready to do the breakout on this side. The only problem is I don't know where the wires go anymore because it's been a little while since we made this panel. So, I grabbed a notebook. We are going to take this panel, see where the wires go, and actually notate it. That way, on the other side, we don't have to do a whole bunch of wires. We can just use the ones we need. So, I'm going to write down what these actually mean, and then we can do a breakout. All right, in the interest of time, we're going to go directly into this Leo Bodner board. So I can just plug this in via USB. And we've got all these nice little screws there so that I can just unscrew it, stick a wire in, call it good. So I'm going to wire up this little guy on the end with just the wires that we called. And then we're going to stick them in and start getting programming this guy just to get it on, see what our button inputs register as. So we are going to start on that and here goes. Basically as simple as making an initial cut, getting a hold of the wires, and then either you can just pull them out, or you can use the thing that we always cut off. Where's the string? There's the string. And you can literally just pull the string, and it'll cut it for you. Oh, most of the way. But that just kind of bananaed and filleted it almost all the way. Definitely far enough that we can just pull it out. Now we have all these beautiful twisted pairs. All right, which ones do we need? Both of the greens, both of the oranges, and one brown, but no blue. Brown, but no white black. White brown. Now we got all of our wires. Let's pop out this little jack. All right, so we've got our little tool. We're gonna put the orange. We're going with A, which means goes right there. That's orange. Make sure she's all the way in. We'll flush cut that later. Uh, there's the orange twisted. Orange twisted. All right. Then we have. Green, twisted, push that in there nice and snug, get a nice good connection. Green, Ish. sweet. Green, getting there, and then brown. Brown goes on the very end. All right, there is brown. Let's go through, make sure they're all in there nice and snug. Pull out the flush cuts, I'll put that up there for now our little trash bin flush cut everybody and we're gonna throw on this little cap and it's 
omnidirectional, so it doesn't matter which direction. So that'll go there. And then before we actually do anything else, I want to strip these wires real quick. So, nice and easy. We just figure out what size it is and strip it. Come on, off. Thank you. All right, now we have some exposed wires. We have to A, figure out the orientation, which is this way. B, figure out what we want to do with them. Oh, these are my analogs. I don't want to use them for this, but eh, I could flip it around for digitals. Let's do that. So we're going to go in the digitals then. So we're going to put, I don't know, I do need some resistors in the middle. Okay, since we're only testing the switch, I'm going to put it on power. I want my 100 ohm resistors. Grab just one. And then we are going to put that on switch center, which is the orange white. I'm going to couple this guy with orange white. That looks coupled. Just touch them both. And then we are going to plug in. I know this is not the ideal way to do it. We're going to plug that into here. Eh, we're actually going to plug that in up top. We'll see how that goes. And then we need, who are my others? You know, let's do this right. Okay, since we're only testing the switch, I'm going to put it on power. Pull out my 100 ohm resistors. Grab just one. And then we are going to put that on switch center, which is the orange white. I'm going to couple this guy with orange white. That looks coupled. Just touch them both. And then we are going to plug in. I know this is not the ideal way to do it. We're going to plug that into here. Eh, we're actually going to plug that in up top. Maybe. We'll see how that goes. And then we need... Who are my others? You know, let's do this right. All right, let's do this more right. Back up that, back up that, back out this one. And for now, I'm only gonna do the switches. Well, I don't know, we'll see. All right, those are plenty open. So, power's gonna go in zero like that. We're just gonna tighten that until she stays. She's staying? Cool. And then we need, number two is gonna be test A, which is orange. We kind of have to finagle that one in there. Let me hold that, tighten it down. And then a little bit of wire management could be used. Um, B is brown. Plug that in, sweet. And I will plug in the LEDs. I just don't remember which side was what. Uh, yeah, I do. The This little green one, green and white, needs a resistor as well. It shall join the resistance. Something like that. So well, let's grab another one. And I'm going to grab a little, knew they little munchy. Can't really peel back that too well. We're going to munchy that. Grab my wire, munchy that. See if we can't get them to cross, pinch. Good. Make sure the tail is not gonna touch anything. So it wouldn't be catastrophic, it would not help me. Don't do this at home, kids. This is not how you wire. <laughs> okay. Next thing we gotta do, put that over there, and plug in this cable and this jack. There's the jack. No crossing wires here. We're all good there. Plug in this guy, and then we'll probably reinstall my switch. And I'm gonna go grab a USB, and we're gonna plug that in and hop over to the, over to the computer. And we're gonna do some pretty simple switches, or some pretty simple code. And I'm probably just gonna rush through the code. We'll step through it at the end, and I'll give you guys some introductory. This is nothing super complicated, so we'll start here. Okay, so we are gonna step through some of this code. Okay, so we are going to step through some of this code. Starting up at the very top, we have basically just some variables we're going to declare. So we've got our out pin for the test switch. So that is just 
And now we're going to send power over it and we're just going to leave that high for now. We are going to change that later, but for now, that's high. And we're defining that as being on zero. And then A is going to be up on the switch and B is down on the switch. It actually registers backwards, so I just swapped out this one and two. That's kind of one of the beauties of being able to specify your pins. And then the output pin for the LEDs is on three, and that's basically just to turn it on. So in the setup before anything else runs, we define these as inputs and outputs. We're gonna set our power pin, turn that on. We're gonna turn on our LEDs, and then we're gonna start a serial so that we can actually see the outputs because we're just printing them for now and not actually sending them anywhere. And then we're gonna loop. So every, so 10 times a second, this is going to go through and see, gonna print, and then it's gonna check and see what the status of pin A is. Is it a high or a low pin? And basically, are we pushing it or not? And then it's gonna do the same thing for B, and it's gonna wait 100 thousandths of a second, and then it loops back up, and it literally just keeps doing this until you unplug it. That's all it does. And then it just prints it. So we'll be able to take this digital read output and actually plug that into DCS later. That's going to be phenomenal. Super excited about that because we will get outputs later. Okay, so one quick modification I had to do. We need pull down resistors. Forgot about those, kind of important. But as you see, when we hit test A, test A shows up. When we hit test B, test B shows up. Nice and easy, nice and simple, makes life Kind of easy. Test B, test A. Cool. Well, unfortunately, that is as far as I'm going to get today. I can't quite integrate this fully into DCS because I am unfortunately out of time. But I'm going to put this back in the cockpit. We have the Leonardo running. We have inputs. That's a phenomenal start. And it's even glowing. So I'm going to put this in. And yeah. All right. The first switch is inside the cockpit and lighting up. That's phenomenal, I like that. It's lit up, it's so cool. So, the next step is going to be plugging this into DCS and actually getting it so that when we hit test A and test B, we get a DCS input. So, look forward to that video soon. We now have the first lit up panel. I am super excited. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed seeing that and getting the first piece in there and lit up. It's almost the same color as the HOTAS. But hopefully you guys enjoyed it and we will see you guys in the next episode. Alright, we are over here in Arduino.